Hello everybody, I'm Gwen Campbell Mendes. Welcome to Gwen's Bookish Ramblings. And my there was an explosion on my computer a couple days ago, and I've had to re-download my recording program, and this is my third attempt at recording it because heavens forfend I get finished before midnight. Um by which I mean, you can see, it's after midnight, and I'm trying this again. So, here's hoping that this actually works. Um, so, how... So, The Long Classical Athens is uh, interesting if you're interested in law, if you're interested in classical Athens or ancient Greece. Uh, if you're not interested in those things, it's... Uh, less interesting, shall we say. Um, this is a book that very much falls under the auspices of textbooks. Um, I mean, it was assigned to me for a class, uh, but it also, it's, it's, it's not horrifically dry, but it is a little bit dry if you're not interested. Um, but... <laughs> And this video is going to be a little bit shorter than usual because um, I'm going to be probably futzing around trying to figure out how to get my recording program to work because I don't even remember what settings it had now and I didn't think to set this up enough in advance. Um, anyways, so uh, this is the most interesting, one of the really interesting things about this book is the way that it discusses, uh, to a certain extent, how you do research into law when you don't have access to a complete, uh, with the complete legal texts of any given society. If you were to try to reconstruct Canadian, the Canadian legal system, uh, without outside knowledge by looking at all of the legal writings we have, you could probably get a pretty decent idea of our legal system because you would have thousands and thousands of cases to read, you have all of this legislation, and you can stitch it all together and figure out uh, what all the rules are and, and value systems and all kinds of other stuff. Even if all you had was case law, you'd still be able to stitch things together because the cases are all talking about various specific extant laws or, you know, uh, referring to other cases. And you can use that to backwards construct legislation. However, Athenian law, we don't have a complete collation of of legal texts. We don't have a complete collection of laws, legislation. We don't have complete collections of the so-called law speeches uh, because you didn't hire a lawyer when you were uh, standing before a court in Athens, in classical Athens. What you did was you had to speak for yourself, and so there were people who basically made a job out of writing speeches for people to give in a law court. So you have these pre-written speeches that uh, will have references to what the law of this, that, or the other thing is, and how it's interpreted, and so on and so forth. And so those are very, very good resources, but they have the problem that, of course, the interpretation of the law is being done with a very specific slant. Um, and you have certain writings that discuss the outcomes of various cases, uh, but again, those don't break down all the laws or even all of the parts of the given s sector of law at issue. Uh, the other thing, of course, is that is the question of convention. That is, there are things that we just do, that we just know, that have been done so very, very much that they might as well be laws. And while this book does indicate at some point somebody said very specifically that if it's not written down, then you're not to count it, um, nonetheless, uh, there are things that we can't necessarily know about that may have circumvented that. Uh, so what you wind up doing is, among other things, looking at... Uh, 
Aristophanes satires to say, well, with a satire, you still need to have enough of the point of origin for whatever joke you're making. You need to have enough of that point of origin available and visible and so on and so forth if you are to be able to understand, you know, the joke and and what's supposed to be amusing about it. And so you can use that for re in order to reconstruct how courts work, but it's very, very limited because, of course, first of all, satires will not have every single piece of, you know, law or law court there. It will not necessarily explain every single last thing. And so there are things that you know a lot about because people wrote about it a lot, and then you have things that people didn't write about or that the writings were lost. And sometimes those things are so very, very important, but people didn't write about it because they didn't realize how that thing might get forgotten about. Because there are always things in history, and the further back you go, the more likely you are to run into this problem, where you say, I... I'd like to know about this. This is an important thing to know about, but nobody thought that it was important enough to talk about because everybody thinks so very much that this is just how things are that you don't need to talk about it. The sky is blue and the court works in this way. Well, uh, the sky may still be blue, but our courts don't work that way anymore, and so it turns out it's not as fundamental as people thought it was, but because they thought it was fundamental, they didn't write about it. So there's, there's that. And there are, of course, things that one wonders whether it's a particular thing saying this, this list of items must go this way, whether it was obvious in context and at the time that this particular set of cases were consistent in this set of ways such that they should go to this particular court to be discussed and decisions made about them. Uh, so that alone is interesting and of course yes the reconstruction of how the law worked in various ways is also interesting assuming you're interested in that kind of thing. And I'm going to cut this short because uh, my recording program has been highly problematic today. So that's everything, and I'll see you all next week.